With new or recently updated entries from Mercedes, Audi, Volvo, and even Jaguar, the luxury sport wagon segment seems to have a little bit of a spark. And this week we've got one of the brightest new wagons around, the fascinating Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo. How does it look? I'm not really a white car kind of a guy, but even I'm forced to admit that the Panamera wagon looks really hot in this crisp color. The 20 inch turbo style wheels actually look a bit demure on this big body, and it's hard to find an angle from which the Porsche doesn't look really elegant. I think the sweep of the rear light cluster across the tailgate and back corners is especially lovely. How's the storage? Now, with 49 cubic feet of total space with the rear seats folded, there's clearly a lot of useful space back here. It's just not quite as roomy as other sporty wagons like the Volvo V90 and Jaguar XF Sport Brake that we tested recently. The very large center tunnel takes up real estate that other cars dedicate to storage solutions, but the Panamera still has two cup holders, one large and one small, along with a bin under the armrest. And I like the clip that holds my smartphone in one place. Is it roomy? This Porsche might be slightly behind the curve in terms of storage space, but it has plenty of the stuff for humans. Up front, I can luxuriate in acres of legroom, and the multi-position seats would seem to accommodate perfect driving positions for all kinds of folks, big and small. A similar story in the back bucket seats, where even tall guys like me will find room for our knees, shoulders, and heads. How does the interior feel? You know, I've always really loved Porsche interiors, and even though this is one of the more basic Panamera setups, I still really, really like it. These sport bucket seats just feel really perfect, and they make you wanna go find a good road. Moreover, all the stuff that I'm looking at in front of me, this gloss black and metal accents, just make the cabin feel really dramatic. Is it well equipped? This is the Panamera 4 Sport Turismo, the base spec for this model, and it's been rather lightly optioned by Porsche standards. Features include a very nice black leather trimmed interior and generous light by way of the dual pane panoramic roof. Our car has about $13,000 worth of options, with the big ticket items being the rear steering feature at $1,620, the cool 20 inch wheels for $1,790, and the ever popular Sport Chrono package that adds a nifty stopwatch on the dash and Sport, Sport Plus and individual modes for tuning engine, transmission, and chassis. How's the infotainment system? This is a big, bright, responsive screen that was pretty easy for me to navigate even on my first go. I really like the search function on the navigation and the judicious use of redundant physical controls. Access to Apple CarPlay starts to round out a very complete tech package, though we do miss Android Auto. Is it a good daily driver? No, first and foremost, this is a Porsche that's also a wagon. And that means that in the rear seats and behind the rear seats, I just have a lot of flexibility that I wouldn't get in, you know, obviously a sports car. And really it's about the equal of a lot of SUVs out there, which is why we love wagons. Now, when you're not out carving canyons, one thing that I found today is that the Panamera Sport Turismo works really, really well as a commuter car. It has a few things going for it. One is it's got this multimodal suspension, which means that when you aren't driving really hard, you can get actually really good ride quality, even on bad roads. And the other thing is that the volume in the cabin from wind noise and road noise is really, really low. So it just makes for a painless commuting experience. Is it fun to drive? Okay, so it's still definitely fun. There's a nice little rip of exhaust. The thing is, uh, this is not an overwhelmingly powerful car for a Porsche especially. It's got a turbocharged V6, three liters, and it's making 330 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque. Now, before you say it, I know those numbers are a little underwhelming, but it'll still get the car to a top speed of 160 miles per hour and up to 60 in 5.2 seconds. 
And that engine is really helped out by a super slick, great to use, and actually pretty enthusiast oriented, eight speed dual clutch transmission. You've got these paddles and they really just rip off shifts super fast when you want to drive it in manual mode. And remember that cars from this brand aren't all about straight line performance either. They're about excellent handling and just kind of like good rewarding driving behavior. And even as the base Panamera Sport Turismo, this car has that in spades. The steering weights up really nicely and actually the car turns in a lot quicker than you would expect, probably due in part to the fact that it's got the rear wheels turning a little bit and tightening up the circle for me. How's the fuel economy? The base engine for the Sport Turismo might be down on power compared to some rivals, but the trade-off is decent fuel economy. 27 miles per gallon on the highway and 21 city are both respectable figures here. How much is it? And here comes the kicker. Porsche demands a premium versus just about all of its competitors. From the base price of $96,200 all the way up to my as-tested price of $109,260. Nothing handles quite like a Porsche, and your wallet knows it. What are the negatives? The sticker price is a big one. Take the Audi S7, for instance. That's a sleek, lovely, wagon-like vehicle with more power than the Panamera and for thousands of dollars less. Now, it's not a Porsche, but how much does that badge mean to you? Who should buy it? I think anybody who's shopping for a Cayenne should at least test drive the Panamera Sport Turismo. Not only does it offer most of the utility of that SUV, but you'll certainly be the only one on your block driving one.